Nah, son, baby. And this is another episode. Can't help but swing it, boy. Swing it, brother, swing. And this is your host. Nah, son, baby, 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 baby. Here we go. Microphone chat one two one two. This is your host, Nah, son, baby, and this is another episode of Swingers After Dark. I now with. Joel and Layla, and they're from you know Silk City Socials, but you can't say that ten times fast. Ow! And they they from the west side of Michigan, Western Michigan, Grand Rapids, or as we call it in the hood, Gun Rapids or Gun Rule, you know. But besides all that, so you know, I, I've I've come across this couple through my Swingers After Dark podcast. And they wanted to join the fuckery. Yeah, stay with the shits. So, you know, Joel, first of all, so I, I didn't even know that. Well, you, you got to excuse my ignorance because I didn't know that they had a an LS scene in Michigan. So is there like an LS scene in Michigan or you just like to migrate to other places in the Midwest and other places in in the United States? There's quite a large LS scene in uh, Michigan. Um, there's uh, a bunch of clubs down near Detroit, uh, Lansing, and then we are uh, two years in here in Grand Rapids and uh, going strong. Okay, so do you do you think that do do you find more swingers in the Midwest or more swingers like in the East Coast? Because I'm I'm on the East Coast. And it's like clusters. It's like a flourishing scene out here. But in the Midwest, it's not as big or commercialized. It's mainly like small, like close knit. Do you find, do you come across more swingers in the Midwest as opposed to or in contrast to other parts in the United States? In the Midwest, they're, they're more closet swingers. So it's, it's more difficult to find them out and search them out. Um, but there is a large uh, contingent of them in the Midwest, uh, uh, as evident, um, if you go on SLS and take a look, uh, there are quite a few. So do you think that it is because, you know, people are kind of bashful or they're shy because in the Midwest, you still have like those, you know, old school principles, whereas out East it's liberal, like people don't give a fuck. But so do you think that's the reason? Like Middle America? Well, absolutely. The Midwest is generally a conservative area, and so most people, you know, tend not to put it out there as quickly. <laughs> oh, okay, because cause I'm from Chicago, but I'm in New York now. And, you know, in, in Chicago, you know, I, I just know I'm not familiar with the with the LS scene, with the lifestyle scene in the Chicagoland area. I just know club meet for more. So, you know, it's Wait, first of all, do you tell like your friends and family about your activities and the lifestyle or are you just incognito, I mean, excuse me, incognito with it? <laughs> uh, as far as our family, incognito all the way. Uh, you know, most of our friends are already in the LS and so we, we you know, don't really have to tell anybody. <laughs> a lot of people are fucking boring. Uh, so, so, so where have you traveled? You know, and, and you're first, wait, first of all, how long you've been in the LS? Are you newbies? Are you like veterans, OGs? What is your so called status that people like to harp on? So, we as a couple have been in the lifestyle for going on almost eight years. And so, you know, we started out just like any other couple, finding our way and, you know, figuring it out. And then, as you know, we got more comfortable. We decided to venture out and be able to put on, you know, small events to large events and started Silk City Socials about two years ago or so. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's Silk City Socials because it's smooth as silk, baby. And bet you can't say that 10 times fast. But, you know, it's like, like, how, how, how did you get that eureka moment that you want to get into the lifestyle? Because a lot of people, a lot of couples, rather, they see the lifestyle 
as a way to spice up their relationship. And I say that's not right because when you look to when you look for the lifestyle to spice up your your relationship, that means that your the lifestyle is like the main course when it's really supposed to be the dessert. You know what I'm saying? It's not supposed to be a bandage of your relationship. So how do you view the lifestyle as a couple? Well, what made you get into the lifestyle as a couple? Well, we were married for about 20 years when, you know, we, we heard somebody say to us and ask us point blank, are you in the lifestyle? Because we've always been a very outgoing, flirty type of couple. And we kind of looked at him and go, what are you talking about? What's the lifestyle? So we didn't even really know that it was in existence. And so we started to investigate it further and thought, oh, this sounds like fun. And so went to a few parties and decided that the environment fit us well and just started having fun. Okay, so what are your rules? Because a lot of couples, you know, they don't have their rules in order. And then even when they have their rules, you know, somebody want to be a creep and break the rules, you know, because a lot of people think that rules are meant to be broken. So how did you vet yourself as a couple to know, like, it's kind of like ESP. You don't have to be around your mate to know what your mate is doing or your mate is thinking. Everybody is walking in one accord. So how do you build that trust as a couple? Well, it, like any couple that, you know, has been in the lifestyle for a while, rules have changed. And, you know, at the beginning, there was a lot of them. And as we moved out throughout the lifestyle, you know, they became fewer and fewer. I would say our basic rules are we do everything together and, you know, everybody has to consent to what's going on. And if we don't cross those boundaries, our own or somewhere else. So, you know, and, and that's a very big faction of Silk City Socials because we always want our guests to be safe and to have a fun time and be respected above all else. And, and touch on, no pun intended, touch on Silk City Socials, you know, as far as your demographics, you know, is it mainly singles, couples, what is the, like, the ethnics makeup, like, break it down, 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 down. Tell the people more about your group. Can do. Our Silk City, actually, we have two groups. We Silk City Socials um, is primarily a couples and single ladies uh, club. Our demographics are being in the Midwest, primarily 90% white, 10% um, other. Uh, our other group, Triple X Social Club, is open to everyone, um, including single men. And that demographics is about the same age-wise. Both of them range, um, you know, has the full spectrum uh, from 21 up to 65. Primary age group, uh, if I was to average it, would be probably around the 40 okay. number. Okay, okay, okay. So, so it's like the grown and sexy, you know, no, no kid shit. You know, it's like the grown yeah. and sexy. You got it. You got it. So uh, do you do you think that, you know, you've been in the lifestyle for almost 10 years? Do you think that the lifestyle evolved for the worse or for the better or you're just indifferent about it? Because, you know, you got social media, you got fake book. You know, my listeners know that I don't call it Facebook. I call it fake book because it's, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, you know. So do you think that be, be, due to the advent of social media that, you know, it's like, it's like a free for all. Anybody could go to parties and events and they're not vetted. How do you thwart people coming to your parties when they when they have no business coming to the lifestyle parties? They have no it, they just see it as a fuck fest. They don't see the lifestyle as a place to, you know, place to, you know, what, what's that word I'm looking for? H help me out to um to forge yeah but to forge friendships you know to, to make new friends they just they just see it as a big fuck fest so how, how do you vet your members Let, let's take it there how do you vet your members our our members actually if you go to the silkcitysocials.com webpage have to fill out a uh, a free membership form and we actually do um not like a thorough background check on them in terms of, you know, checking with the FBI and everything like that. But we do check them out and make sure that they are um, legitimate uh, swingers, if you will. Um, 
we do when newbies or new couples, people that haven't been to any of our events, come to our events. We require them to go through a tour um, of the event and everything like that and kind of gauge their, uh, like you said, whether or not they're into it for the fuckery or if they're into it to actually enjoy the lifestyle and be part of the, uh, the community. Okay, so how, how did the lifestyle change, or it, is it remained constant? What did what changes have you seen in the lifestyle as far as how people conduct themselves, or you see more singles than couples? Because not for nothing, I'm seeing more singles than yes. couples at parties. And not only that, I don't see a lot of married couples. You see a, a lot of committed couples, but you don't see a lot of married couples. So what what changes have you seen in the lifestyle? It has gone through a, uh, a change um, in the last seven to ten years, uh, where it used to be all primarily married couples, and now you're seeing, like you said, a lot more singles or people just hooking up to come to an event. And it's unfortunate um, because it, it seems like those people are typically the ones that, like you said, are in it for the fuckery, and they're not in it for the community and uh you know uh establishing relationships and things like that so i would have to say that it's kind of gone in an, a, a a negative route which is unfortunate um and then it's also that's also transpired into a, a more of a negative image to the uh vanilla people of the lifestyle that it is just a uh, throw your keys in a bowl and pull them out and that's who you're gonna fuck tonight where it's not really that okay so when, when you're out on the bout, out and about with the missus do you look at other couples and say hmm i wonder if they're swingers i wonder if they're like because sometimes I, I i do that often so do you like look at couples and say you know i, I wonder if they're in the ls or when you speak and when you just so happen to speak with couples they're flirty or they're quote unquote free spirited do you ever ask yourself should I, should I, you know, ask them, are they in the lifestyle or should I just play it cool? It's like when you, hmm? Depends on the setting. Today we were out grocery shopping and yeah, there were uh, a few couples that we were like, oh yeah, um, maybe we should uh, follow them around the grocery store for a little while. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then if you're at a bar scene um, or something like that, yeah, it's more talk to them, feel them out see where you know see where they're at in their relationship and what have you and uh, you never know because behind every door there's a you know there's closet swingers so the, the, you know what you should do next time you go to the grocery store you should get a pineapple and put it upside down on the top of the car many times <laughs> do that on a weekly basis <laughs> uh, okay yes yeah, just to see who who uh, um who will know the symbols because the symbols rather because the lifestyle has become a commercialized just like how everybody's into bdsm because of 50 shades of gray everybody want to be a dom or sub and slave and brat and this then the third so do you think that you know do you think that the commercialization of the lifestyle swinging in particular is a gift and a curse both i agree yes gift and curse it's a gift because it's actually getting uh getting the swinger community more out there mainstream but then again like we said earlier it's bringing in those that aren't in it for the right reason Okay, so how do you feel about the concept of soft swapping and, you know, hard swapping? Are you a soft swap couple, a hard swap couple, or y'all just deal with single women? <laughs> well, that would be my wish, but hey, you know, then there's reality. So so you just deal with single women? No, 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 we don't. <laughs> so y'all a hard swap couple, y'all about that life? Well, we are about the life, but that doesn't mean that every time that we meet a couple, it's always hard swap. You know, it, it can be, you know, anywhere from soft to, to what we call it full swap. And, you know, generally it is a couple scene. Okay, so th do you think that the concept of cuckolding, do you think is negative in a lifestyle or it just 
it's not about you know degrading your mate your your male mate it's about your male spouse seeing you having a good time so how do you feel about the concept of cuck holding personally i don't like it um i don't think it really is being in the lifestyle it's it's a uh, it, it's a separate thing kind of like uh the uh bdsm um community fet life community uh they all they all kind of fall under the lifestyle umbrella but they're all different in their own way and they all they all have their own category so i would put that in a separate category and whether it actually falls under the whole big lifestyle umbrella and yeah, yeah i don't I, think so i i, I okay let, let's touch on that no pun intended so what you think of, I, i've noticed that you know, in the lifestyle, you see like a lot of blurred lines. You see a mm -hmm. lot of so-called integration. You see people with different kink. You see people in BDSM. You see like BDSM sessions and swing parties. You see. No, so how do you think? Like you see a lot of fetishes. So what do you think about the integration of quote unquote? different umbrellas other lifestyle because not for nothing a lot of people who are into polyamorous relationships and bdsm they want nothing to do with swingers so what do exactly. you think, so what do you think about how social media blurred the lines because you have people in bdsm they're swinging they're in kink they're in you know fetish they're in polyamorous relationship now they got this thing called poly bdsm so it's, it's a lot of confusion that's going on especially when people don't got their rules in order and they don't know what they want to do. So what do you think about the blurred lines in this current LS scene? I think a lot of that has happened just due, like you said earlier, about the uh, the social media aspect of it and the commercialization of it. People uh, throw it all under the umbrella, but the people that are truly in each one of those individual groups are in their own group. Um, and so the socialization and commercialization have kind of meshed it all together, which I don't agree with. Um, I mean, we are all our own different um, groups. Can we all get along? Sure. Are they all the same? Absolutely not. So do you find now, now we really going to get to the fuckery before we get to your Silk City social, you know, group. So do you, do you think there's drama amongst the singles or amongst the couples? Because a lot of couples want to blame the singles for a lot of fuckery, but not for nothing. I've seen a lot of couples do some fuck shit. So do you think that when you come across couples, do you come across couples who don't have their rules in order or they're messy or they want to be creeps and, you know, do the backdoor shit and try to, you know, try to talk to your woman behind your back or try to talk to your man behind your back. Do you find a lot of nonsense amongst couples or amongst singles or is it equal? I would say it's equal um, because of the fact that, I mean, it's just like it is out in the vanilla life. Um, it, you're going to have pieces and parts in, in all of it. Uh, single men get a bad rap because of the single men that come in uh, that are in it for the fuckery and not in it for the enjoyment of the actual lifestyle community. There are couples that get into it and there I it's not really even the couples that get into it. Typically it's the man that gets into it and tries to persuade his significant other um, wife into it. And yeah, that's it's a negative thing, uh, but you have it everywhere. So when you first got into the lifestyle, how you get over the, like the sight of, well, both of y'all can answer this as a matter of fact. How do you get over the sight of watching your mate have sex with another person? That's not you. And not only that, you see your mate like responding in ways that you haven't seen before. You're like, oh shit, I need to step my game up in the bedroom. So how do you get over like the insecurities and the jealousy and the lifestyle? As a uh, well, first first and foremost it's about communication I, it just does in anything else in life and you know it, something might come across and go wow he, he really liked that what was it about you or about it that you liked and tell me so that I can do it also and make you feel that way so it, for us it's more about the communication I mean, has there been jealousy maybe a little bit in the fact of yeah you know she did better than I type of thing but at the end of the day, he's coming home with me. And and so I, for us, at least, 
jealousy hasn't been an issue. Seeing my, my man pleased by another woman, so long as I'm there to be able to see it, I'm all for it because that's the fun part of it, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, and I agree with that. I agree with that. It, uh, seeing your, your significant other with another man, um, my wife, obviously, with another man, it at first it was like, ugh, yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of weird. But seeing the pleasure on her face and making, you know, knowing that she was happy and what have you, that's that's what I want for her is to be happy. And like she said, she's coming home with me at the end of the night. So fuck you, guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. So uh, let's talk about Silk City Socials. Did I say it right? Because I'm I'm like, yeah, you got it. Oh, okay, Silk because City Socials, yeah. because this tequila is getting to me, and I didn't eat today. I didn't eat breakfast, so you know how that go. It goes straight yeah, to the right. bloodstream. So talk about uh, Silk City Socials. I, I know you're you're based in Western Michigan, but what what is your what is like? What do you do your thing, or, or what do what is your your stomping ground or your personal playground for swingers? No pun intended. So yeah, so talk more about um, Silk City Socials. Like what? In, in other words, an even better question: What type of parties that you host and when? What is like your Super Bowl? Like the Super Bowl? This is like our stamp. The, the parties that we're known for, the events that we're known for. Sure. Uh, Silk City Socials, we like to put on unique events. We aren't uh, like a lot of clubs that are out there that just do hotel takeovers. Silk City Socials, we do getaways uh, throughout um, the Midwest, actually the United States. Um, our signature event is our Gatlinburg event that we hold every year in February. We go down to Gatlinburg. We run a huge-ass uh, cabin, uh, bring down, I don't know, 20, 30 couples, and we just we make a weekend of it. Uh, we party. We have fun. We go on excursions. Um, we do all kinds of different things. Our, and we also do uh, hotel takeovers. Not that we don't do those. We have one coming up, uh, a big one coming up in in September, September 17, 18, and 19 in Chicago. We're going to be partnering with a group called Friends Night Out that is from Chicago. Friday night, we're going to have a magic mail show that all the women are going to love. Saturday is going to be a swing fest uh, at the hotel. We're shutting it down. Nudity anywhere. We're just going to rock the place out. And do, do you host parties like weekly, monthly, quarterly, or whatever the case may be? Our other group, Triple X Social Club, we actually hold events on a monthly basis. We also intersperse that with some meet and greets and um, other events as well. So we are between Silk City Socials and Triple X social club we hold probably three events a month so what's the difference between the two is one more like couple oriented and the other is hardcore like break it down like what's the difference the city socials or scs is primarily a couples and single ladies and it it gears more around the getaways um and the triple x side of it is more the monthly events, the hotel takeovers, and it also it allows uh, single men um, as well as the couples and single ladies. Triple X is a little more uh, risque, a little more uh, well, triple X, if you will. <laughs> so, so do, do you like house parties, like private house house parties, or do you prefer hotel parties? Which or it's like which one would you prefer, or which one that you feel more comfortable? Especially during COVID. Person, especially during COVID. Sure. From a personal standpoint, we like the uh, the smaller house parties. Uh, more ability to. Uh, Get to see people yeah. because people don't have yeah. to hide in their rooms. Exactly, exactly. Um, and typically they're smaller uh, and uh, you you get to know everybody uh, versus a big hotel party where you got, you know, 200, 300 people there. You're just kind of walking around with uh, that uh, deer in the headlights type thing. Okay, which one should we uh, jump on first? 
no pun intended. So, right. So, what what advice would you give couples new, like new couples coming into lifestyle? What advice would you give them? Take it slow and communicate. And, and what what about the misses? What advice would you give not only the newbie couples but also single women and, and, and also like single men? Like, how would you want single men to approach you if they want to play? If they want to play with you? Well, I'll start with the first one. For, for newbies, uh, I would reiterate what Joel said in the fact of take it slow and communicate and don't break your rules in the heat of the moment. For single ladies, uh, you know, they need to be honest with what they're looking for and, you know, not cross their own boundaries because in the heat of the moment, once again, you can do something that you may not regret or will regret the next day. A single man approaching us, uh, what I appreciate m most is that he first connects with my husband. And my husband isn't going to be comfortable with me doing anything or threesome with a single man if he is not comfortable that that man is going to respect me. And, you know, once he's crossed that line, then, you know, you can get to know me a little bit more. <laughs> and Don't on that question. Don't be a fuckwad. Yeah, don't be pushy. <laughs> like, in, in, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, have some finesse. Have some finesse. You know, be smooth. Don't be a caveman. Don't be a Neanderthal. You know, have some finesse. Amen. And on that note, this has been another episode of Swingers After Dark. And this is your host, Nassan, baby. Check out my website at www.nassanblaze.com. That's www. N a h s u n b l a z e dot com and check out my ebook fuck that's f u c k it's on Nook Kindle iBooks Google Play it make you say uh na 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 ow and shoot me an email at swingpodcast at gmail dot com that's swingpodcast at gmail dot com hit me up with any questions or concerns that you may have 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 rate share subscribe and comment on this podcast yeah da 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 dig and on that note until next time. Peace.